Hey YouTube, welcome back to Part Time Fab. So today we are going to make a video, maybe two, maybe three. I don't know how many this is going to be. It might be five. But um, I am going to show the assembly of the rear end for the dragster. Uh, several people have messaged me and wanted to see this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show all the steps, try to show all the steps and give you details. I know there's other folks that uh, are probably more versed in this and uh, you should probably go watch their videos. But, um, you know, I've put together a bunch of these, but am I by no means, I, I am by no means an expert at it. So uh, if you are following me, hoping to learn all the ins and outs, you're watching the wrong video. But I am going to be following the instructions, so hopefully I'm not too far off, and I, I shouldn't be too far off. I've got uh, US gears for the 9-inch, for the so I'll be following their instructions, and I've got some instructions from Strange. Uh, I do have a pinion, a brand new aluminum pinion support here to go inside of this. So um, without further ado, Let's get to it. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to Part Time Fab, and if you want to learn about tools, thanks for stopping by. Today we're learning about whatever this is called. <laughs> I should have listened to my dad, but I did not. Anyway, this is something and he needs to buy bolts for it. That's all I know. <laughs> and this is something that looks like a, a spaceship for me, to me. All right, with all jokes aside, let's get into this build. So as you can see, we're going to be cleaning off this thing. I've already painted it and uh, or the this thing is the center section here is our ring gear and pinion we need to wash them and you can see from the factory us gears has made a good mark there for us to try and make our mark look like theirs so we know what we're looking for and that number that there that i'm pointing out is the pinion depth that is the number that we need to shoot for later in this assembly using our pinion depth tool that uh, I'll, I'll explain in great detail how to, how to do that. But um, we're going to wash our gears off and make sure all the crud's off. And then we're gonna, I'm going to put some of this um, WD-40 lithium on here. In hindsight, this stuff works really well for keeping things uh, from rusting. But it is a poor lubricant. Uh, later on, I am trying to push on the bearing onto the pinion and it's kind of tough um, later on I put bearings on other things and I used regular engine oil and much easier much easier but here you can see I'm fitting the uh, pinion support and with that lithium grease it got stuck it wouldn't hardly come out of there finally did get it out okay so following the instructions it said to clean the new pinion and gear I have done so, and then I lubricated everything, the gears over there, lubricated the pinion, and um, the next thing that I need to do is it says to make the top pinion slip fit using emery cloth. However, mine fits perfectly. It slides quite easily on and off. So, no need to use an emery cloth. Put that back in the pinion support. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is install the bearing. Now, this is a 35 spline pinion, so it's the big pinion. Uh, on a, it says on a 28 spline, there will be a spacer. Now, that may be on the, sh on, um, I'm not sure what that, gear set that is because strange doesn't make a gear set 
they actually sell U.S. gears. But um, it says that the, there'll be a pinion sleeve and spacer, but for the 28 spline only. So mine's 35, so I don't have to do that. Then it says press fit the rear bearing over the shaft. So that's what I've got right here. I've lubricated, <clears throat> lubricated everything. It should slide on very nice. Now, I want to point out that the kit came with one of these. Now this looks a lot like this. Some people have said that they use this to press their bearing on. Well, this is actually the preload spacer, except this is a type that you actually um, grind it or sand it down to achieve the proper preload. This one comes apart and it has shims on the inside. To achieve the proper spacing. This one would be perfect for pushing on the uh, bearing, but um, I'm not going to do that. Actually, what I have, and just so happens I have a ton of this, is this tube. This is actually a two inch schedule 40, I think, maybe could, could be 80, um, that fits this bearing just perfect. It's not riding on the cage, it's just on the center part and it fits perfect. It doesn't even come close to the center here uh, to scar the uh, pinion, but it, it, just, it, it just, I couldn't have went and bought this any better, but I just happen to have a ton of this on hand. So what we'll do, we'll get that started and then we'll use this along with something here to use the uh, Harbor Freight Press to push that down and get that installed. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, as you can see, I've, I've got the Harbor Freight Press all set up and ready to go. And I was really lucky I had a piece of tubing that fit that bearing and wouldn't damage the bearing cage because that I really thought was going to be a sticking point that would take me forever to find. But I did. I actually had a piece. Too bad the uh, Harbor Freight Press broke for me. Um, it, the, the little cylinder jack there gave up here in just a moment, you'll see. And uh, I had to go get another another jack. But as you can see, I'm struggling to get that bearing down. That uh, should have used oil, regular engine oil. And just like that, my Harbor Freight press broke. I don't know. What are you going to do? Sometimes things are cheap. But um, we're going to call it done. Keep the video kind of short. We're going to have more parts. Uh, to this video coming up soon so with that I appreciate you watching and you can subscribe for more videos just like this one thanks and we'll see you next time